Guys, welcome back to another episode of the My Make Podcast. Um, I think if you listened to uh, two episodes ago, I told you that I wanted to start bringing more of my own uh, audio, I suppose, uh, to you. So I could talk about some specific things that are coming up in um, sessions with my clients, um, some practical advice, some advice that I think we can all remind ourselves of and actually put into practice every once in a while. And I think it's so great because not only for, you know, the people I work with, but, you know, even for myself, these reminders coming up with, you know, the very, very simple, very common problems that we all face in our lives. And if we can just nip those in the bud or at least know how to work through them, um, we're all going to be a, a lot better off for it. And, you know, one of the things I keep coming back to with this show and, um, the people I'm working with, even in my own life, I always find that when life gets a little bit too chaotic or stressful or anxiety provoking, it's often because I have missed or neglected the simple things in life. It is the simple things that make all the difference. You know, this is coming up in the in my professional work. It's coming up in my personal work. I've just finished a three day uh, fast. Um, so like a, a bone broth fast. So Siobhan and I were just um, basically living on nothing but vegetable broth and then bone broth at night with water and tea throughout the day. And I'm looking forward to getting to uh, getting to that in the show. But these these simple things in life, if we can just remind ourselves of these, know how to put them in place and then actually go about achieving them. God, mental health, is it's a funny one to me because it's like, it seems to be this very broad, complicated thing. But in actual fact, human beings are very simple. You know, we, we make it complicated, but we're actually very, very simple creatures. We're just mammals. And if you have a look at, I think I made this point a couple of weeks ago, when I watch my dogs behave, obviously they're a hell of a lot more primitive. Uh, they're not awakened from a conscious perspective. They aren't aware they're having an experience, um, but they are able to, I suppose, m- you know, mediate from pain to pleasure just just by the way that they have evolved and what they do. And, you know, one example of this is when it's really sunny outside, they can't wait to scratch the door down and sit outside. And they just sit in the sun for like 25 minutes, you know, and when I was watching that, that just tells me one thing that, you know, even sunlight is so important. It's, it's a, it's a, prim, it's a, it's a 210 million, year, probably even older. Um, you know, the mammalian brain has been around for about 210 million years, but it's probably even older. How important, we all know how important sunlight is, but yet we neglect that shit. You know, we don't, we don't, we don't sit, we can't wait to scratch the door down and sit outside and, you know, sit outside the sun. We don't do that stuff anymore. We just get straight to work. We work all the time. You know, we eat shitty foods. We don't socialize. All of these very natural, very important things we've lost, you know, and getting back to these simple things, it doesn't have to be so complicated. A bit of sunlight here, a bit of time to ourselves, movement, uh, fun. Like, isn't life supposed to be fun? But we've forgotten how to be, you know, have fun. So I suppose a lot of this is coming up in in in, in my work with, with clients and they're great reminders for me and I really wanted to bring that to you as well. And I suppose today's show is all about procrastination because although we're not dogs, you know, we do live in a world now that values work and values rationality, you know, and we, we disregard emotions, which I don't even need to get into, but we do have to get things done in this day and age. And I know that's um, annoying and boring, but it is necessary that we know how to get things done. We know the difference between um, working hard when we need to work hard and burning out, you know, when we've actually just gone too far and we actually need to rest and what that means. I was having a chat with a client a couple of days ago and we were talking about that specific difference. When do we know or when is the right time to stop what we're doing, to turn around because the path is a dead end or, you know, we've burnt ourselves out and we need to rest or when do we need to pick ourselves up by the bootstraps and go, okay, I'm actually not doing enough that I need to be doing right now. This got us onto a conversation about procrastination. Procrastination 
probably kills all of us. And it's a brilliant discussion point because I think we can tackle procrastination um, in a very simplistic way. And I want to break this down for you. So I've got some notes here. Procrastination, I believe, and I'm looking forward to your feedback on this one. The two, fundament, the two fundamental reasons why we procrastinate is A, because the schedule is too chaotic. Our to-do list is too chaotic. Okay, I've got my to-do list here, and in preparation for this show, I've tried to make it very, very simple. Okay, My daily tasks for today are going to be recording this podcast, updating Trello, updating my to-do list, writing, and then watching Outlander. Very important. The weekly, <clears throat> the weekly tasks... They're very, they're, they're quite simple as well. It's just a combination of reading, doing the podcasting, sitting in silence, writing and, and working out. If I can hit about four to five of those a week, five is killer, four is totally acceptable, then I'm happy. I have procrastinated my whole life and I think that's not necessarily because I, um, you know, have been lazy. It's just because I haven't planned appropriately. I, I have tried to get all my shit done that I want to get done. It's going to make me incredibly happy and a, and a success and all this sort of stuff in one day. And obviously that expectation, expectation is way too high. So I'm going to get disappointed. And then when I get disappointed, that, that makes me want positive emotions. So the little temptations here and there, you know, like sweets and watching Netflix become a hell of a lot more alluring because I just... I'm, I'm down in the dumps. You know, I didn't get the shit done that I wanted to get done that day. So my first point when it is about procrastination here is, is your to-do list too chaotic? Have you woken up with this rushed mentality thinking that you're going to get 7,000 things done today and then, and then you're absolutely going to get that done and then you're only going to be happy after you've done that or you're only allowed to be happy after you've done that? You know, these are, these are crazy expectations that we put on ourselves. And I think a lot of it comes down to how we compare ourselves to other people. That's so hard not to do in this day and age because, uh, you know, we're just bombarded by other people's lives. You know, I'm being hypocritical right now by saying that because you're listening to this show and you're, you know, and I'm very humbled by that, but you're allowing me to, you know, take some time out of your day, hopefully so you can learn, but, uh, you know, there is that kind of, all right, this is Tom's life. How does that compare with my life? And we do that so much in this day and age. And unfortunately, we just need to be more responsible and we need to tell ourselves when enough is enough. And all right, I've, I've probably scrolled too much today. I need to get back to what I'm doing. So there are so many reasons why we procrastinate. And so much of it is basically down to the fact that the 21st century is just information overload. But if we want to reclaim our own sense of self and our own authenticity, we need to get back to the roots of what we're doing. You know, what are our goals? Who do we want to be in six months time? What does our potential look like? Uh, Do we want to be you know, married? Do we want to have kids? Do we want to be single and party? You know, what do we want to do? What kind of job do we want to have? How do we want to look? These are so important, these kind of framework idea. But that first point when it comes to procrastination, is your to-do list too chaotic? Is it too much? Okay. That is a worthwhile consideration. And I'll give you a really important um, tool to help you figure out if it is too chaotic or not. Ask yourself this, be honest, look yourself in the mirror or look at the to-do list and and say, are you achieving these things frequently? Okay. Or I mean, has the to-do list changed? That's an even better question because if the to-do list hasn't changed, then it's probably too chaotic. Okay. Because you're not getting anything done. If if you've had the same to-do list for about three months, you need to, you need to calm that fella down. Okay. It could be that your tasks are too ambiguous as well and there's a lack of specificity, which is actually my second point when it comes to procrastination. We will come back to that in a second. But if your to-do list hasn't changed at all, then there's probably too much on there. Or you're probably not interested in actually completing those things that you are, that you think you need to do, but maybe you don't need to do them. You know, maybe you don't want to read that book. Maybe you actually don't want to work out and go to the gym because the way you like to stay fit is doing a tango, going to a, going to a salsa class, you know, going for a run. Like 
when it comes to ticking things off, which I think are, is really important, that sense of progress is really, really fulfilling. That feeling like we're getting things done. And there's a really um, conclusive point to that in terms of what's going on in the brain, the body, the neurochemistry behind progress. Um, that's the positive emotion that we want to feel. Don't don't need to get into that. But if you don't, if you're not actually ticking things off could be one of those reasons it's too chaotic you know you actually don't enjoy the tasks that you've set out for yourself there's a difference between enjoying them and then being challenging and then also being challenging and boring you know you don't want to have a boring life your to-do list should excite you it should be challenging but it should excite you to be like who am i going to be when i've got this stuff done okay that's really exciting and rewarding and fulfilling you know getting back to this second point now Tasks being too ambiguous. I have found this a lot when doing this kind of work with my clients, like goal setting and setting frameworks for our lives, because that's how we, um, you know, reduce that sense of existential confusion with who we are and what we're doing. We need frameworks. Who are you now? Who do you want to be in six months time? What's your point A look like? What's your point B going to look like? Okay. Does that excite you? Who you want to become? If not, we need to have a greater discussion around who you think you want to become. Excuse me. Tasks being too ambiguous, okay? There is a difference between setting a tasks, setting a tough, excuse me. I've just, I've had so much, God, after that three-day fast, I had literally just bone broth and water. And now I've had a massive smoothie, a whole bunch of eggs and avocado and pumpkin seeds. I've had some salmon. um, I've had some jalapenos. I've had a coffee. I'm on fire right now. <laughs> I'll probably crash in a couple of hours. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. I won't keep it live on Facebook for you. Um, so tasks being too ambiguous. There is a difference between setting a task for yourself, saying something like market music and, uh, and posting one Facebook video um, of me playing the guitar and singing. You see how that with that greater sense of specificity, what we're trying to do here is reduce the amount of decisions you have to make because the more decisions you have to make, the more chaotic it feels. So that goes back into point one of procrastination and the more work you feel like you have to do. We want to just be able to, like I have here, and this has taken me years to figure out, right? But we want to get to the point where we can literally just tick or put a line and we know that that job is done. Then we don't have to think so much. And then what we actually feel like we need to do gets done. It's such an important, um, it's a great feeling. And and we know that we're moving the needle towards those goals. The point B, becoming who we want to be. If we want to be a writer, break that down. Obviously you have to write the book. Maybe day one, you have to write the contents page. It's not just write if you don't know what that's like, okay? Maybe it's what's the fundamental question you are trying to answer in this book. So getting back to that point of the music, it's like it's too ambiguous to write something like market music. What we want to be thinking of is how specifically are you going to do that so that when you sit at your desk for the day or when you look at your to-do list for the day or the week, you know exactly what you have to do. So you can just find the flow straight away. You know, everyone's talking about flow in this day and age. I love flow. I love Mahali, Chikset Mahali. Um, in Jim's in Jim Quick's book, Limitless, he spoke a lot about the flow state. Um, Jordan Peterson writes about the flow state. There's a whole lot of myth, mythological underpinnings talking about this, this place of the kingdom of heaven, the nirvana, the now, uh, the flow state, Eckhart Tolle writes about it in The Power of Now, you know, um, implicitly. Um, I'm trying to grasping at straws there when I talk about Eckhart Tolle writing about the flow state. But it's that idea of you just feel like you're a, a vessel and the work is just moving through you. We all want to find that flow state. I think we can find it by setting up a structure around it. And the best way to do it is just to reduce the amount of decisions you have to make, you know, make your tasks super specific. So it's almost just like, oh yeah, that's a piece of piss. You know, when I, I used to have a really tough time um, working out in the mornings and um, I was really struggling to pull myself out of bed. And often it was because of a couple of these things. So I procrastinate because 
I didn't know what kind of workout I was doing. Um, I was working out way too much and there was no joy in it. And I wasn't prepared the night before. So, because I wanted to be a CrossFit athlete and I wanted to be an AFL player and all these, all these lovely, you know, ideas of who Tom could be, but they weren't very authentic, you know? And, um, one of the things that really helped me with working out was working out just for the sake of working out because it's fun, enjoyable. I can listen to an audio book whilst I'm doing it. I would also, and still do, prepare so I can literally just flow into the garage in my backyard when I'm really tired. I mean, I know who I, who I am in the morning. I suck. I'm really grumpy. I'm just shit in the mornings, okay? So if I'm going to be truthful and honest about myself, that means that I need to be super prepared so the Tom of tomorrow morning can just flow into the garage, even when it's super cold, and get the shit done that he wants to get done. So I put my clothes next to my bed. I make sure that my runners and my earbuds and my phone are literally in the sunroom so that as soon as I put my clothes on, I can just walk to the sunroom. I know my water bottle's there and sort it out so I can just pick that up. I walk outside, I grab the key to unlock the garage, and then I'm in the garage before I've even had a thought. So I'm trying to render myself unconscious so that I'm like in the garage, working out on the spin bike before I've even thought about what I have to work out or what I'm going to do for the day. And because I'm so, because it's so easy, I'm just flowing into that state. It's like, oh, I've already got my workout in, you know, and and I haven't even had a thought yet. So the less decisions that we need to make, the easier it is for us to kind of you know, get these tasks done. That's the point I'm trying to make. I was just using me working out as an example, but how can you do this? You know, like you need a framework, right? So what's your point B? What do you want to get done in the next six months? And be really honest, you know, don't hide away from it. It can be, it can be scary because when you start to outline your potential, you're immediately judged by that potential based upon who you are and what you're doing right now. And that can be confronting because it's like, oh my God, I'm so fucking far away from, you know, getting all this stuff done. But I want you to be honest. I want you to go, this is what I want to do for the next six months. Okay. It's not going to bring about um, eternal salvation and bliss, but it's going to make me feel like I've earned my sense of fulfillment. And, and you deserve that. We all deserve that sense of fulfillment in this day and age. Write that shit down, you know, write down your potential and then make an outline. What does, so if you want to become that person in six months time, who do you, like, what do you have to do every day? You might think that there's a lot you have to do, but if you can set aside two hours, maybe you have to get up a little bit earlier, or maybe you have to go go to bed a little bit later, or maybe you just have to say no to a few more things in life. Doing and then your two hours every day, maybe it's one hour, maybe maybe it's half an hour, you know, even half an hour a day. If you can find half an hour to be selfish for who you want to be, that's a win. And then say to yourself, what do I have to get done every day so that that isn't a wish or a dream? but it's actually a goal. It's a goal now. It's a reality. It's a potential reality, okay? And when you come down and you figure out what you have to do every day, I want you to really think about some of the stuff we've spoken about on this podcast. So reducing the amount of decisions you have to make. Make it really, really simple for you just to tick off those things. So the thing is, um, in uh, Stephen Covey's book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, one of his habits or one of his like ideas, I think from it's been ages since I've um, digested that book, but he says, uh, he talks about sharpening the ax, okay? And I think it was Abraham Lincoln, and please um, let me know if I got this wrong, but I think it was Abraham Lincoln, and I'm going to butcher this quote, but it's the idea of if I'm going to cut down a tree, I'm going to spend... If I have six hours to cut down a tree, I'm going to spend the first four hours sharpening the axe, okay? So you're not just hammering away at the tree for six hours, you know, you're sharpening to make that thing like an absolute sensational blade. So the two hours is pretty simple. It's you just chopping away, doing what you have to do, okay? So there's, I want you to think about valuing planning over actually executing, okay? Planning 
is going to be the difference between you procrastinating and you getting your stuff done. So how specific can you make your tasks, okay? Then you just flow right on through and achieve them. That's the best method. After years and years of being told that, I'm telling you, it works so well. If you just make your tasks way too specific and you know, live in accordance with the truth. Like I said before, if your schedule is too chaotic and you haven't gotten anything done that's been, and the to-do list has been the same for the past three months, change it up. You know, If someone was addicted to smoking, and I make this point with my clients a lot, so guys, if you're listening, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> but if you, if you smoke 20 packets of cigarettes a day, tomorrow, try not to be cold turkey you know, if you could do that, brilliant, but I don't know if it's sustainable or not. Try to smoke 19 cigarette packets tomorrow, okay? I'm not someone who can just give things up cold turkey. I just, my my habits are far too shitty. I need to very, very, very gradually wean myself off things or wean myself onto things, okay? So for me, um, I need to, I need to be specific with my tasks, for me, a win is meditating, sitting in silence for 20 minutes, four times a week. And then when that becomes really simple and I can't visualize a life without meditating for 20 minutes a time, four times a week, I'll bump it up or maybe I'll do something else. But we have to be willing to confront the truth of our own way of life and our own behavior and our own routine. And I think some of that kind of plays into this idea of procrastination as well. And I do this all the time myself, you know, I... I'm so often having to remove myself from the expectation of who I wish I was right now and come to terms with the truth of who I currently am right now so that I can move the needle forwards and hopefully become who I want to become. But I want to get back to these points, guys, just so you really, really get the idea here. So procrastination, two points here. Okay, number one, ask yourself, is your to-do list too chaotic? Is there too much on there? Is it just too is it just too nightmarish? Okay. You might have to bring it down. You might have to set the bar a little lower. Number two, are your tasks on the to-do list too ambiguous? Are they market music or are they write one 500 word blog about my music and post to Facebook today? That's specificity right there. You know, these are smart goals. That's 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 what we're talking about here, okay? If there are too many decisions that you find yourself making on a day-to-day basis, it's probably because you haven't prepared enough, okay? How can you just flow into making the tasks happen? Do you have your frameworks um, well-established? Who are you right now? And how does that differ between who you want to be in six months' time or three months' time, okay? The final point is detaching from expectation, okay? I know it's not fun to confront the truth and recognize that we actually aren't who we say we are or who we think we'd like to be, but coming to terms with the truth is going to allow us to set the tasks appropriately, make the tasks ambiguous and start to move the needle forward so that we can actually progress. Okay. Coming into that flow state, we're trying to maintain a state of unconsciousness. How can we just flow into the gym so that our first thought, you know, which makes life tough, thinking, should I go left or right? Uh, We don't experience that until we're already on the spin bike in the gym. However that manifests in your life, you know, maybe it's getting the kids ready. How can you prepare so well the night before so that the kids are ready before you've even thought about them being ready for school? And you're like, oh shit, I've already done that. Okay. Um, I think all of this comes down to the idea that having a mission is more important than achieving it, okay? Getting back to that idea of ticking off goals, feeling like we are progressing in life, that we're noticing differences, okay? Having a mission is more important than achieving it because once we've achieved it, it's like, well, what do I do now? And that makes us think again. So who you could be, and I say this to the the guys and girls I work with all the time, I love the idea of never stop dreaming, you know, never stop creating. We lose all that sort of stuff when we, when we come into adulthood. And these are brilliant things that we, we had when we were children. The idea of who we could become should be so grand that it's almost like we never will, 
but even just striving to become that person will keep the fire alight in our lives. So having a mission, it's more important than achieving it. And I'll give you one more point to finish this this show on, guys. When it comes to procrastination, if you find yourself just in this habitual loop of not getting anything done, you might have a friend that can help keep you accountable and you just text them and you say, hey, look, um, I've been trying to get this shit done. So you're going to have to be honest. (laughs) I've been trying to get this shit done. It's not getting done. Can you keep me accountable with this? I would like to achieve this every day or four times a week. I want to be able to, um, I don't want to snack after dinner. I just want to drink some bone broth or I just want to have a tea. And uh, every time that I snack, I have to let you know and I owe you a hundred dollars. Okay. The hundred dollars is not ten dollars. You know, if you, I just feel like if you if it's gotta be real, there's gotta be something on the line for you. You know, fear is a brilliant motivator. And if there's not something that's on the line for you, it's like, well, you're not gonna change. You know, change comes from being fearful of staying stagnant and also being excited by who you could be if you do change. The the two frameworks there of pain and pleasure. That's how we move. You know, getting back to my dogs. If I if I yell because you know they they've eaten some bloody hummus dip. This is a true story off uh, off the bench. Um, they they're freaked out. You know, they they move away really quickly. Also, if uh, Siobhan's dangling cheese in front of their face. They're excited. They're going to get there really fast. You know, we're mammals. We're not that much different. So fear is a brilliant motivator. If you say to your mate, I'm going to give you $500 and be really honest about it. You know, I'm going to give you $500 if I don't get this shit done. You're going to get it done. Okay. Put yourself on the line. Really put yourself on the line. Pleasure, being motivated by pleasure is good, but it's not the only way you can motivate yourself. Okay, so accountability is brilliant and that maybe they could tell you something as well. Maybe they could be like, okay, well, I'm going to do this as well. And if I don't get it done, then I owe you $500 or I have to mow your lawn every day for a week or I have to pay for your dinner the next time we go out or I have to like there are so many ways that you could keep each other accountable and it makes it fun because then you're in it together. There's a sense of connectedness there. That's a really strong primitive need, you know, um, an evolutionary need to feel like we're in doing this shit called life together. Okay. So guys, I hope that really helps. Again, we're talking about procrastination here, detaching from expectation, having a bit of foresight and making your task, excuse me, specific. If you need to go back and listen to the show again, because I, um, I've had a coffee and I haven't had a coffee in like three days and I'm probably speaking really fast. But uh, if you need to go back and listen to it again and and just finally, you know, this has come up with, with clients as well and it's, it's um, I wouldn't say it's disappointing, but I think it does need to be said. A lot of the times, the reason why we don't change is because we don't feel worthy. You know, we don't feel like we're worthy enough to actually be that person at point B. I don't know where that comes from. I certainly had it, you know but I don't know where it comes from. You are absolutely worthy for uh, improvement and becoming whoever you want to become. And it saddens me. And whether it, whether or not we're just bombarded by this news media that is constantly showing us all this fearful stuff and, you know, all the world's in turmoil. And yeah, I mean, of course, yeah, there are issues out there. But that shouldn't detract from you wanting to fight to be the best that you can be. You deserve that. You deserve to be happy. You know, although mental health issues are on the rise, you know, like that sucks. And I consider myself privileged to be in this position. Um, It doesn't mean that you have to be in that place as well. You can fight for your own sense of individuality and uniqueness and love and joy and sacredness. I think it would be, a real mistake to think that you aren't worthy of being happy and experiencing fulfillment, you know, so go out there and get some, you know, um, guys, please, like I said, listen back to the show if you need to, um, there'll be some show notes and, um, and, uh, 
you know, the show's always up on YouTube, there are highlights all throughout Instagram and all that sort of stuff. As always, love you lots.